Hey folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. Well, this was going to happen on the PC Engine files eventually, but getting my orange slim model PlayStation Vita just accelerated the plan and now brought it to fruition. I finally installed RetroArch so I could play PC Engine games on a PlayStation Vita. Now, there are some drawbacks to this as far as I'm concerned. The first is that RetroArch is an incredibly bloated platform, so loading it up takes a long time, quitting games takes a long time, launching games takes a long time. It just doesn't perform super fast. It performs well when you get into a game. I'm not objecting to that part, but I would have preferred a standalone VPK that I could have installed through Vita Shell rather than RetroArch. It would have just been nice to have a PC Engine emulator all by itself. Maybe that is available, but I couldn't find one. The closest I got was Mednafen, and then it said you had to do line input to use it, and I thought, how am I going to do that on the Vita? I just gave up at that point, and I think Mendefen is probably one of the cores that's in RetroArch anyway, so I just decided not to worry about it. But as you can see, it does take more than a little bit to get a game loaded up and running. By the way, I apologize for the fingerprints on the screen. I tried to wipe it down with a microfiber cloth before filming, but the light on the camera just made it look even more obvious that I had been using the touchscreen. And uh, I guess the OLED is more notorious. Uh, tongue tied. More notorious. No, no, notorious. The OLED screen is notorious for picking up fingerprints and dust and such, but. I think that's probably going to be any PlayStation Vita when you have a touch screen. It's just going to have things happen to it over time. Now, I mapped the menu button to hold down select for two seconds. So here I can go in and make a save state of a game in progress. Or I can do it again. And I can quit out of this content and you will see... How long it takes to close a game, a PC Engine game, and go back to the menu. It's not fast. I did warn you. But it works. I mean, I guess we shouldn't expect performance at Steam Deck levels anyway. This is a handheld architecture that came out a decade ago. So, it's still pretty damn good considering the age, the amount of things that you can do, the options that you have. Besides mapping the select button as the return to menu option, which I found much more convenient than the default option of holding the left and right shoulder buttons, select and start at the same time. It's kind of a tough ask when you're holding it in your hands. You almost have to set it down to do that. I also need to set the default folder to my PC Engine ROM so I don't have to surf up a few layers to the UXO directory each and every time I want to get into it. That's tedious too, but I could either do that or I could have it scrape the folder and just install links to all of my PC Engine games. I might do that as well. I don't have the thumbnails turned on right now because it says performance takes a great hit when you auto-load thumbnails pulled from the internet. And I don't feel like I need the performance to take any kind of a hit as it is considering the state of it right now. Again, not the actual gameplay. When I'm playing the PC Engine games, the performance is fine. It's just... Getting the core loaded, getting the content loaded, quitting the content when you're through and going back to the menu to select different content 
that's the slow part. And if anybody knows any way to improve that performance, maybe uninstalling a bunch of the cores, maybe editing some files on the Vita, I would be welcome to finding that information out. So leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter, M-R-M-E-G-A-M-A-N-F-A-N, Mr. Mega Man Fan. I'll take any advice, gladly, happily accepted. But for now, I have to say that it performs better using RetroArch in some respects than Hugo on the PSP Go or a PlayStation Portable. And one of the games I'm not showing you that would illustrate that point is Devil's Crush. The reason I'm not showing it is because every time I've tried to use footage of Devil's Crush in YouTube, I get hit with a copyright strike. Well, not a strike, uh, a copyright claim. A strike actually hurts your channel, but a claim just means you have to share the revenue. And I guess the intellectual property owners of Aliens Crush and Devil's Crush claim that music anytime it shows up in somebody's video, so I just don't play those games for YouTube or show them off in YouTube videos like this. But when I played Devil's Crush on my PSP Go, there would be issues between, like, scrolling one screen to the next, it would seem to flicker when the ball was moving up and down. Not consistently, but intermittently, it would just seem like it couldn't handle keeping the memory in the buffer for the screens. That's the best way I can describe it. It would just, like overlap one screen onto another and become a mess and it would stay that way for a couple of seconds and then it would resolve itself so i didn't have those kind of issues playing it on the vita which i suspect is just because it's a more powerful system probably has more ram in it for screen drawing and a faster processor and just overall more powerful in general now, what this doesn't have that the PSP Go has is the portability factor where you can just stick it in your pocket and you're off to the races. So the Vita performs better on PC Engine, but it boots up a little slower and it's not as portable. But I think the trade-off is worth it in the quality. It's just things to keep in mind, I guess I would put it that way. Also, as long as we're here looking at the Model 2000, I have to say I've noticed compared to the Model 1000 that there are things that I definitely prefer. The OLED screen is obviously a big selling point for the Model 1000 and why a lot of people covet that, but the raised buttons on the 2000 are really nice. Like, the start and select buttons in the lower right-hand corner are much easier to use. They were kind of flush with the system on the 1000, but on the 2000, they are very easy to press. The home button, too, is also raised, and it's definitely easier to hold for longer periods of time because it's lighter compared to the 1000. So, it, it feels like it's mostly an improvement, and the only drawback is that it's not an OLED screen. But if you download a registry editor, which is shown off in a lot of Vita homebrew and modding videos, like Retro Game Core has done a video about modding the Vita and using the registry editor, you can actually go into the color palette settings of your Model 2000, and you can adjust the RGB range and the screen brightness and all those kind of things and actually make the display more vibrant and closer to being like an OLED screen without actually being OLED technology. So if that's something you want to do, then uh, modding a 2000 is probably the right way to go. In fact, some people won't even use a 2000 without modding it. For me, I want to mod it just so I can do stuff like this, so I can play PC Engine games in an emulator, but you might have your own reasons. You might have other kinds of custom things you want to do with your Vita, 
Maybe you want custom themes. Maybe you want different boot up animations or music. There's all kinds of things you can do once you mod a Vita. So whatever you decide to do, that's up to you. You just need to go to the vita.hacks.guide and take it from there. It's really not that hard, but it is, of course, at your own risk. And to me, it's worth the risk to be able to play emulators and homebrew. And there's some pretty amazing ones out there. The Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 remakes from Sega Master System are pretty sweet. And I'll have to get into those in a different video. One that's not focused on PC Engine like this one is. But... I would also say not to use the homebrew browser that comes by default in Vita Deploy. Get the better homebrew browser. Just Google search that. It works way better.